his parents. It, it's important for me to be different than I am. I should improve myself. Hey, what's wrong with me? Why should I change? It's everybody else who needs to change. He was the family man, the minister, the guy many of us grew up watching on the TV show Seventh Heaven. But now actor Stephen Collins has been accused of an unspeakable crime, molesting at least three underage girls over two decades ago. Police say a woman came forward two years ago. She told them Collins forced her to touch him inappropriately when she was just 14. But no charges were ever filed. And now an audio recording of Collins confessing to the crime has surfaced, obtained by TMZ. Collins' estranged wife, Faye Grant, says she recorded a conversation with Collins during a counseling session in 2012. She says she handed the recording over to authorities that year, complying with their request, and it turned up yesterday on TMZ. Grant told E! News she had nothing to do with its release. Now, we cannot confirm whether or not the voice in the recording is actually Stephen Collins and Faye Grant, or if it was edited. We're going to play part of it now, and we're leaving out most of the graphic parts of the conversation, but you still may find it disturbing. Let's listen. Okay. How many times with Once. And uh, you said that there was another girl. How many girls altogether? No. no. You no. said that there was. Help me out here. There was sister. There was sister who was uh, ten because she wrote me with because she was ten. Um, ten, eleven, twelve, around so yes. several years. There were, I think there were, yes, there were like three incidents over about three years. Okay. So, and then there was the girl across the, the way um, at, uh, I'm That's and then there's, so it's just right. three? You're sure? But it really is hard to listen to that. So since these allegations came to light, Collins has been fired from his role in the movie Ted 2. He's also resigned from the Screen Actors Guild National Board. Now, famous or not, these crimes happen all too often. So how do we protect our children from them? Joining me now, author, activist, wife, mother, and force behind Aaron's Law, Aaron Marin. Now, Aaron was sexually abused as a child by someone she loved and she trusted. It's something she says changed who she was from a happy, carefree child to an angry, self-destructive person. Aaron, thanks so much for joining us. I know this is a difficult topic for a lot of people to talk about that have been through a situation like this. So I want to get right to it. So with the statute of limitations, Stephen may not be able to be prosecuted. So why wouldn't the victims have come forward sooner? What happens to someone when they face something like sexual abuse? Thanks for having me. The problem behind that is the fact that children get one message and one message only, and that's from these perpetrators. No one will believe you. This is our little secret. You have no proof that I'm doing this to you. So kids stay silent. They don't come forward until much later in life, often adulthood. You know, decades have gone by. And that's often why we need to get rid of the statute of limitations because these survivors don't come forward later in life, which is why I go back on we have to empower and educate kids. And that's what my law does. You know, I'm it gives so kids a voice. I'm so happy you bring up the empowering and educating kids because I watched um, your piece on Oprah and you talked about how it's still very much a hush hush topic. Why, why is that? Why do you think people don't talk about this openly? Well, because there's so much shame and stigma attached mm -hmm. to this. And we live in a society where there's so much emphasis put on stranger danger. People don't want to think that the neighbor down the street, the family member, the pastor, the coach would do this to their children. So we focus so much on stranger danger, but we don't sit down and talk to our kids about this. All right, I want to read you a tweet, Aaron, real quick. So Valentina says, many people have a dark side. They feel shame deep inside. That's the reason why they're so good at hiding it in public. So what makes people so good at hiding in public, whether or not it's the person like Steven who is the abuser or someone like you who has been on the other side of it? Well, because of the shame behind it, people don't know how to talk about it. We don't talk about it in our society. People are afraid that they're not going to be believed. That's what they've been told forever by these perpetrators. So they carry around this shameful, dirty topic that nobody wants to talk about. But as I often tell survivors, once you open up and start talking about this, the one thing that you can reclaim from your perpetrator, they may have taken your innocence, they may have taken your trust, but by reclaiming your voice, you could put that face and voice on the silent epidemic and put them to shame and silence. 
So, Aaron, you're leading the fight with Aaron's Law. So what can people do? How can they teach their children to combat something like this? How can we open the conversation up on society more so that we're better, better educated about what's actually going on with this, in this situation? Yeah, education is the key. Aaron's Law requires age-appropriate sexual abuse curriculum taught preschool to 12th grade to kids in public schools on personal body safety on how to speak up and tell if you're being sexually abused. Mm -hmm. It's teaching educators, parents, on the warning signs to look for if your kid is being abused, on the proper way to report it if a child discloses abuse. Parents need to sit down and talk to their kids and explain to them the areas that are covered by your swimsuit, nobody ever touches you. If somebody ever touches you there, you report it and you keep telling until it ends. Because we fail to address that topic with kids, and I don't want those parents that are listening to this to wait until it's too late and that seven-year-old that's being abused tonight doesn't come forward until she's 30 in drug rehab and saying, hey, mom, this is why I turned to heroin, because I was silenced and no one told me how to speak up and tell. Erin Marin, thanks so much for joining us. I imagine it's a very difficult topic to talk about, so we commend you for coming forward and doing the work that you're doing. So for more on Erin um, and her cause, you can go to our Facebook page.